Hi, I'm Dave Crane. Welcome to Turbocharge Your Brand TV. And here's another quick introduction to another very cool gadget from Merlin, the show sponsors. If you're on the go, you're traveling, or maybe even a boardroom, and you want to illustrate your PowerPoint, show a movie, or even illuminate something big on a wall, maybe photos of where you've been traveling to, or so on, but you haven't got the right kind of gadget, well, look at this. Mobile phone. Projector. Honestly, fits perfectly into my Android, and guess what, when you switch it on, big enough to illuminate a wall in high definition, and this will last for six hours. Imagine six hours watching your favorite movies on the go. Staying over in a hotel, you want to make sure that you've got a good movie to watch, just like having your very own theater when you're feeling miles away from the people you love. What a cool gadget. Check this out and more stuff at MerlinDigital.com. Meanwhile, here's the show. Turbocharge your brand TV. Welcome back to Turbocharge Your Brand. I'm Dave Crane and here I am outside at the Dubai Rugby Sevens. I want to do a special event based Turbocharge Your Brand because for every company at some point you have to do public events. Whether it's for your staff, it's for your clients or for your sponsors or maybe it's just something that you want to come along to and help make happen. There's a few simple rules that always happen when it comes to making an event. I want to make sure today you get to know all the fundamentals from mindset to dealing with an audience to making sure that you've got a good follow-up for more cash online after the event. We're going through all that and more in this episode of Turbocharge Your Brand TV. So welcome back to Turbocharge Your Brand TV. What I want to discuss just now is your inner mind thought when it comes to working an event like this. If you're the MC or you're organizing a team to work with the audience, the most important thing is to know that when you're going to be talking to an audience, whatever comes out, they will appreciate. So many people have a natural fear of speaking in public and I can understand it. When it's put down to its very basic form, more people are scared of speaking in public than dying. So if you can imagine going on to a funeral, on paper, more people would prefer to be in the box than talking about the person who's in the box. So how do you deal with it? How do you overcome all the fears that come with people about public speaking? Well, it's very simple. As I mentioned before, nobody knows whether, what you're going to say, whether it's right or wrong but you. So you can't actually do anything wrong. If you've got a script prepared, you know the basic things that you want to say, then that's cool as well. But one thing to always practice is just say the things over and over in your head. And the idea is, whatever's happening with the microphone or the audience, the idea is to get whatever's going in in your head, in your normal conversations, to your audience, irrelevant of the microphone or any interference or amplification, that's it. So the end result is, if you're a good performer and good at public speaking, you should be able to talk in a normal conversation to somebody and do the same thing in a normal conversation to an audience. Now when you want to get an audience to, to rise up and do more stuff with you, very simply, you just have to raise the volume of a sense of urgency or maybe even smile a little bit more. And when you smile, trust me, it comes out on the microphone as well. Here we are in the Bar Rugby Sevens, and we're going to have a lot of fun now in finding out what goes on with an audience. We're going to work in the YMCA. Watch this, it's going to be a lot of mad stuff. And now on Turbocharge Your Brand TV, we're going to analyze an audience, your outer game. Your outer game at an event isn't just about networking, it's not just about producing things that turn into money, it's also about getting an audience to react to you. So how do you do that? Well, it's very simple, same as in any relationship. You train them, or they will train you. Now the good thing is, if an audience is at an event, they want to be at that event. 
they're already expecting certain things to happen. And from your point of view, what you have to do is make sure that you deliver on all the levels that you want. So what does that mean when it comes to actually practically working with an audience? There are certain things you need. You need instant feedback from them. They need to be able to cheer, they need to be able to clap, they need to be able to sigh, and they need to be able to feel that they're with you. Right, to my left, ready to count of three, up here. One, two, three, go! Yeah! All around, kidding out, all around, the world is watching. Set around three, let's get a go to the other stand, it's on the way. All the fans say, oh, wow, get all the way going. Fantastic, keep it running. So how do you do that? Be honest. Tell them from the very beginning that you're looking forward to working with them, but it all comes down to them. The more they give to you, the more that you will give back to them. Set in certain rules. Have games, competitions. Make it feel interactive. The more interactive it is, the more they'll want to participate, but make sure the rewards are all pretty good. And now it's time for the big interview on Turbo Charge Your Brand TV. I was very fortunate to catch up with David Bullock. Now David Bullock, you might not know the name, but he wrote a book all about the President Barack Obama campaign to get into power. And from the very beginning he looked at the stats. He looked at the amount of work that was done by Barack Obama online, the amount of work that was done offline, and also the interactivity and how he picked up speed when he got to be voted in as the President of the United States and possibly the most powerful person in the world. He's also used those stats and those factors to be able to work with different areas of industry and create success for them. So how can this affect you? Well, it doesn't matter whether you're online or offline, there's always something that this guy can help you with. So I caught up with him and asked, what do you need to know to really turbocharge your brand in 2012? Well, don't forget anything you've done in your past, that's yours. Keep it. Build upon it. A lot of times when people will leave from one job market to another, they forget everything. Like they get amnesia. Like, oh, I, I, I don't do that anymore. But you did do that, and that taught you something. Build upon the experiences that you already have. And every time you move to the next position, say, okay, what did I learn there? Okay, here I learned about people. Here I learned about the inventory. Here I learned about marketing and sales. Here's where I learned to be able to deal with groups and build teams. Every position that you've ever had taught you something. Don't forget that something that it taught you. And then moving on from there, once you have that life resume, so to speak, Packaging that so that the world will recognize it is up to you. It's a matter of then getting print. I like print more than anything else because if you get print, it's yours. You can point at it forever. Look for the highest level of magazine that you can get promoted in or get a story done on you. Show up on television shows, radio shows, get stories written about you. Do whatever you can do to have someone say that you're unique and an expert in your marketplace. Once you have it, whether it's in your primary market or not, once you have it, you can begin the conversation because it's a conversation piece and then segue the people into the offer that you actually want to give them. I mean, case in, case in point for me, we wrote a book about uh, politics, business, and social media at the same time, but at the end of the day, I'm a business development consultant. So we can talk about all those things that are remote from the particular core, core offer, but then you move them back into the conversation that you want to be in just by, again, being in the conversation. So, now granted, you don't want to write a book on bubble blowing 101. That may not get you very far in the marketplace, unless you have a very good technical spin on it. But whatever it is you're, you're good at, do that first, because if you do what you love, that at least sustain you while you're doing the things that help you to survive. Next up, we're going to look at your online game. How can you do things with the internet when you're actually at a live event? Now, this is a brand new area of business, and I think it's going to be a huge growth industry, because up till now, most people get it completely wrong. The difference between doing it online is right now, most people think you put an event onto your face page, on Facebook, or you do it on LinkedIn. There's much more to it than that. Every single person that you want to be interested in an event, you can get them pre-event, you can get them involved during the event, and you can get them involved post-event. Let me put this in perspective. If you know a large amount of the people who are going to be interested in going to your event, you can probably get the mailing list or get all the different types of clients. So even think in terms of going to the jungle. You know the watering holes where all the animals go to drink? There are watering holes for every industry and for every type of business. Find out where they are. 
It might be a magazine. It might be a TV show. It could be a radio show. It might even be a club that meets once a month. Find out about the watering holes and make contact with those people. It's very easy to do that online. Getting a mailing list or through advertising on Facebook, which is very cheap, get them to be interested in your brand. So once you've got that and you're driving people to an event, get them to like it or say that they're going to attend. Why is it of any interest at all? Well, let me tell you, first of all, a third of them who say they're going to come will actually turn up. Only a third. Once you know that, you don't have to worry so much about the event at all, and you can concentrate on the people who do turn up. When you've got your sponsorship for your event, all you have to do is cover your costs. Never make it so, you're, so it's essential you make money from the event for you to break even, because you never know what's going to happen. There could be a power cut, there could be a royal family member that passes away, there could be a national holiday, or you never know, the hotel where you've chosen suddenly might get swept away in a flood. You don't know any of that stuff, and make sure that your sponsorship covers every single part of it, and bring them in from the very beginning, and get them involved in flyers, any part of advertising, and use that as a collateral for what they're going to be paying for. So you've got your people interested. Supposing you're doing an event about rugby like this event here, or maybe you're doing it about some sporting events, or maybe even pop music, or, or something to do with the industry. Give them lots of information building up to it, getting their interest. But only enough so they want to turn up. That's what you do with your pre-event. So what about during the event? How can you really use an online game so it's fascinating and gets the most out of people at your event? Well, very simple. All you have to do is this. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you've all been busy, furiously tapping away on your phones to get your chance now to win five hundred euros to spend at the Crown Plaza Hotel. We well, asked the question earlier, which country has more rugby trophies than any other one? You said A, Luxembourg, B, Belgium, or C, England. And the correct answer was... England, what a surprise. Uh, the winner was Trevor Dollar. Well done, Trevor. And uh, now the chance for everybody else to win as we put up the next question with five hundred dollars to enjoy at the Belgian Bay Cafe. That's what you should run during your event. So the next stage is afterwards. Now most people end up, after the event, letting people go home. Thank you very much, here you go, souvenir t-shirt, bag of goodies, done. But then you've got a whole year until the event comes around again. This is the magic bit that most people miss out on. This is actually the golden goose. When you run an event properly, you should continue the engagement after the event. Get the contact details for everybody. Now if you run the competition well enough, you should know from a hashtag who all your tweeters are, from your Facebook page all the people who signed up, or even at the events, run competitions so people interact, put their name on a website, or even send you an email or a text message. Once you've got those people, give them more of what they want. You know if you've gone to a rugby event, for instance like Dubai Rugby Sevens, they're interested in fun, partying, the sport, and maybe, I don't know, fitness. It could be a number of different categories, you can ask them with a survey, or maybe do a survey at the event. But then, you've got a whole year's worth of selling them product. It could be merchandising for shirts, it could be the music that you played at the event, it could be a series of videos showing how it could be done, it could, go, it could be a commemoration DVD of the entire event. It doesn't matter, you have an opportunity to sell to them for a whole year, and then, guess what happens a year later? You know who's going to come back. And now, on Turbo Charge, your brand TV, we're going to look at a case study of somebody who's a super successful megastar, not in rugby, in the world of golf. Tiger Woods got into golf from the age of six months. That's when his dad used to play putting in the garage, and little baby Tiger would hold on to his tiny putt and just watch what was going on. Now the key to success, to being a child prodigy, is not because you're a genius at what you do. That's a fallacy about it. In fact, what it means is all you have to do is 10,000 hours of purposeful practice. Those 10,000 hours are not about doing the same thing over and over again. It's doing it and pushing yourself each time. Most of the time, possibly 70% of the time, getting it wrong, but your level of standard goes higher and higher compared to everybody else who's not pushing themselves. And before you know it, at a very early age, you can become the very best in the world. In the world of golf, there's one guy who stands out more than anybody else as the most successful, the most popular, and in many ways the most controversial star of all time. In my opinion, he changed the whole world of golf just by being the person that he is. So let's take a look at Tiger Woods. You don't really instill anything into a child. You encourage the development of it. 
But I would do all kinds of things to mess him up. Just as he's beginning to swing, I'd drop my whole bag of clubs. And he would stop. They would look at me and grit his teeth. And then he would strike it and turn around and look at me. And never say a word, but that look said, now take that. It's a tiger, and I promise you that you'll never meet another person as mentally tough as you in your entire life. And he hasn't, and he never will. My dad was the same way. He made mistakes. Uh, my mom did as well. Um, we've all had troubles, and we've all had successes. And uh, you can't go through life without having mistakes. And you know the the whole idea. That's one of the reasons why my father was just so adamant, so ardent about um, about that. And it's about you know bouncing back and, and coming back and coming back better. And that's the whole idea. Um, you're going to get knocked down. Mm -hmm. um, whether you decide to pick yourself up or not, dust yourself up and come back better, is a decision that one has to make within oneself. And, uh, and that's sometimes a very difficult decision to make. <laughs> And that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, we've got something even more exciting. Back in the studio, we'll look at affiliate marketing. How can you make money while you sleep? Next as well, we're going to go to the Google Insider, Simon Leung, and find out how Google's mind works. And we'll do a case study of Richard Branson, possibly the most popular and successful entrepreneur of his time. How could you miss that? Of course you can't. So join me on the next episode of Turbocharge Your Brand TV.